Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Joe on Joe. It is me, your host, Joe Slepsky, and we are back this week for another episode of Draw with Joe. Now, if you're seeing the video, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why is he staring at the cover? Why are we Why are we all staring at the cover of G.I. Joe, the official How to Draw G.I. Joe issue number two, instead of issue number one? And if you're not seeing this right now, if you're just listening audially, I urge you to head on over to our YouTube channel and check it out. We've been putting these videos up for about the last month or so, uh, having a lot of fun with it. and. Uh, the full videos can be found there. The audio, I'm going to do my best to keep it entertaining as we go along. I'm uh, talking about the characters we're drawing and things like that, all things G.I. Joe. But, you know, ultimately, this little segment of the show is, is best is best experienced visually. And if you have watched it visually and you absolutely hate it, please send me an email to joeandjoepod at gmail.com or shoot me a note on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at joeandjoepod, and let me know what you think. Say hi. Uh, appreciate hearing from every one of you. Um, I, uh, you can also, uh, you can also check out our Patreon page. We host the video over there as well. Patreon.com slash Sean Joe pod. While you're online, please give us a rate and review and, and all the various podcast things. You guys know the deal and most definitely give our wonderful sponsors, the movies in a mail podcast, give them a shout. Uh, they're fantastic. They got a great show. They're always talking about the latest movies. Um, I didn't go to the theaters this weekend. There wasn't much that I wanted to see that new scary movie. Um, Oh, it's got a dude with a bag on his head. It was like limited release out here in California, I think. Um, that looked scary, but I just wasn't in the mood for it. Uh, next week, though, it's got that that Watchers movie comes out. Oh, I really want to see that. Uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, but we, you know, still really for the amazingness that was Furiosa. I really dug it. And certainly, I know our friends at Movies in a Mill podcast are going to be chalking about those films. So, uh, yeah, so why are we on to G.I. Joe number two this week when last week I said I was going to do a big one? Because i got to be honest with you, I sat down to record this and I realized there is absolutely no way I would be able to get anything resembling any kind of competent drawing done uh, of a full-body Major Blood or full-body Duke or, even more importantly, a full-bodied Major Blood fighting Duke in like half hour that I'm trying to get these done in. There's absolutely no way. Just, it, 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 it's not even worth trying. So what uh, <laughs> what I think I'm going to do is for this main feed, just call a mulligan and do headshots uh, and work through these books with the headshots and stuff. And uh, and and I th- I'm going to try to make some time and we'll do the full body stuff maybe over on Instagram or on, um, on our Patreon page. It's because they'll be longer. It'll be a little more relaxed, a little more casual, a little less, uh, you know, presentery because this is the main uh, podcast feed and so on. Uh, but yeah, that was it, guys. I got to admit, I, I sat down to do this and I looked and I went, there is absolutely no way. So um, we're instead, we're going to do something else that's very difficult that I've been trying to do. Well, first of all, this is my pencil for this week. Where is it? There we go. There we go. Yeah. For you kids watching at home, that's a bad word, but it is uh, 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 the diehard slogan. Bruce Willis's John McClane slogan. Uh, I can't remember where I got these. I'm sure it was from my friends in Chicago. Uh, I really don't remember who made these, but they're great. And um, so, I, yeah, I found this uh, diehard pencil in my in my bag of kits. So that's what we're drawing with today. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so so we're going to do... So the, the thing that's difficult for me is, you guessed it, I'm drawing a girl today. Man, uh, I am that classic comic book neophyte draw drawer artist whatever you want to call it i am that classic dude that just i don't i've never drawn women well all my women have always looked way way masculine or to be fair or they look just like and i don't mean this in a complimentary way a john buscema woman because john buscema did the um, it was John B. Summer, right? Who did the official how to draw Marvel comics the Marvel way. Like I could either draw that. <laughs> I could either draw like the Marvel way or that's it. Um, otherwise my women f- f- look fairly masculine. It's not a good look. 
Um, so we're doing, we're going to do cover, and cover girls up first today. Uh, we got Zartan isn't here, so we will get to Zartan, but cover girls up first. So official, how to draw number two, um, great cover. I like, you know, these are, these are perfect covers. They lay it out. There's not much to, you know, there's not much to say. I like the color, the purple and the yellow. Those are two colors that pop together. Um, I don't know if I noticed this on the previous one. They do give, they give you a little bit of their bio up front, you know, primary military specialty, high fashion model decided to enlist in means of finding new direction for her life things like that that's fun um and uh written and compiled by dennis francis and artwork copyright hasbro so we open again with the um some more like kind of basic instructions talking about you know how to do body stuff here i guess i should move this over talk about you know basic instructions on bodies how to draw a you know a swimsuit things like that head begins as an oval body measured in head heights, you know, seven and a half heads tall. So if your head's that big, then your body needs to be, you know, six and a half more of those things like that. And they use, they recommend using like this graph kind of paper to start with. So you get the, um, kind of get a feel for the dimensions and the, the, uh, you know, the, the ratios and things like that. Um, I don't have that. So, you know, of course we're not doing that. So we're just doing it by, uh, doing it by own. And then you get, uh, Courtney here, Courtney in a, in a bikini. Um, and they're saying that that female figure in this, in this case, she's six and a half head tall. So it's like a full head shorter and that's, um, no shade. It's just typically sh- saying that we usually women are, you know, drawn shorter, unless you're making a statement that you're drawing, you know, like a really tall woman. Um, you know, practice drawing each pose in stick figure form first is the easiest way to establish a strong foundation, things like that. So, you know, forget instructions. We're just going to jump right into cover girl. Let me uh, make sure I try to position this as much as possible. So that's, that's our final goal here. There we go. That's our final goal. So we're going to start, uh, again, we're using our handy dandy Spider-Man. So this one's got a nice little, little target down the middle. That's sorry, my Mary Jane's having a little. Speaking of Spider Man, Mary Jane's having a little coughing fit over there. Okay, we'll target down the middle. Uh, let's draw an oval to describe Cover Girls. I like how they, I like the use of the word "describe" there because you are you're describing it. You're describing the vis. You're you're using a pencil to visually describe her head. Adding two lines below to indicate the neck. Divide. Uh, it's oh it's funny it says divide his head i bet you they cut and pasted this from the previous one divide her head with a visit with vertical and horizontal lines to place the center line and the eye line add a straight line for the shoulders across a point one quarter of the so what's interesting is uh i think they're saying actually now that i'm really reading this they're saying do the oval first then find your eye line so that you don't have to um you don't have to make the oval match the eye line right so you do a little center line just to give you a place of balance. Then you do your oval to give you the size of the head. So let's do that. And again, there are, um, you know, things you can do like this, like, you know, uh, to, to give you good, uh, you know, circuit, you know, if, like, if you really need to do it, there's stencils, there's a dog barking, there's all kinds of things. Hey, Shirley Feeney, what's up? Uh, there's all kinds of things you can use, you know, to get your, to get your, but this is, since we're doing this, something like this, this is just your guiding line. You can rough it out. All right. Like this was your finished one. You might, you might want to actually rely on a, an actual like oval. Sorry about the dog barking. All right. I just had to have a uh, long, uh, serious conversation with Shirley Feeney. Uh, she's the best though. No, really what I do is I, I lean out. Uh, I, 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 I give her, uh, I give her an old, uh, he cut it out, but I don't say cut it out, but I give her like kind of a stern cut it out. And I wait for her to just, uh, kind of stop barking on her own. That's the method. That's the strict training method that happens in the Slepsky household. Let the dog bark as long as they want be loud enough. So it sounds like you're, you're in command and then realize you've trained no dogs and they run the house. That's what's happening here. So, Hey, so we're doing Courtney. All right. So her neck would be there and then they got a little, they've got her like a uh, shoulder, like her shoulder line. It's on a bit of an angle here. So then, yeah, it's funny. So where I put her eye line, I think is a little too low. I think I, is it? 
eye line. Yeah, yeah, it's a little too low. So I think her, her actual eye line would be more about there. See, do you see what happens? That's what happens. You do your center line, you do your oval around it. Now you can adjust. So good job. Good job, Wolverine. Thanks for erasing that. Remember last week, uh, we gave out a 90210 sticker. Maybe we'll give out another 90210 sticker this week. Now it says, uh, draw on her eyes, centering each about halfway between the center line and the side of the oval. Um, this draw on her eyes bit is, um, if you look at that, can you see that? That is, uh, that's like, that's like her eyes got stitched together by some kind of serial killer. Speaking of that, man, I watched that Kurt Russell movie, um, breakdown. I haven't watched breakdown. And like, since I saw it in the theaters, I don't know, 20 years ago, man, that movie's good. It breaks down at the end, pun intended. Um, kind of a little, little bit more of a standard action movie, but like the first half is so good. And so Hitchcock, like, is he crazy? Did his wife really get kidnapped? Did she run away? You know, JT Walsh is amazing as always. And then it goes a little more standard action fare. But man, if you haven't seen breakdown in a while, I recommend it, especially it's going to be your nose there, especially if you're a fan of, of Kurt Russell as I am, as you all should be. I, I think I'm on a Kurt Russell kick because of, I got the, I recently grabbed, um, escape from LA and, uh, you know, I love me some John Carpenter. So, um, let's see. So it says the nose line falls about two thirds of the way between the eye line and the chin, with the bottom lip halfway between the nose line and the chin, the ears fit between the nose line and the bottom of the eyes. So ears fit between the bottom of the eyes and the nose line. So her ears are going to end. No, wait, that's, that was the nose line. Bottom of the eye. So her ears are going to go like right there. Uh, so yeah, so we're supposed to be drawing all this. So here we go. Well, this is rough in the shape of the nose, mouth, collar, pupils, and highlights to her eyes. Draw through the neck to find a cylinder shape of the shirt collar. Yeah, it really is funny, man. These, these instructions are really out of whack. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Bum, 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 bum. Again, I always like to start with noses. For good or ill, I always like to start with noses. Um, so my memories of Cover Girl are really only of the TV show. I did not have her as a youth. Cause I didn't have the Wolverine. If you didn't have the Wolverine, you didn't have cover girl. That was my thing. I had Scarlet or uh, yeah, Scarlet. Totally. had Scarlet. I never had a lady J. But I totally had Scarlet. I was shocked that I never got a lady J cause I was a big Flint guy. Um, well, to be fair, actually, my sister was a Flint. She really liked Flint. He was, she was here that bell Ratner. Um, but I was a Flint dude. But I never had a Lady J. I recently got a Lady J. Not recently, you know, sometime, sometime now as an adult, Lady J was procured. And I also finally got a cover girl. She's great. She was fun on the show. Um, I like that they use her, they used her in the movies. That was cool. And it's a fun idea. I think if memory serves, wasn't she modeled after Cindy Crawford? If I'm remembering this correctly. Uh, didn't he give her her hometown was, uh, something like Rockford, Illinois, wherever Cindy Crawford is from. Something like that. I think that's, I think that's, but 82 seems too early for that. Right. So maybe not, maybe it's not Cindy Crawford. I feel like it was someone, there was some supermodel that they actually were basing her off of, but either way, I don't know. She was, well, she would have been 83, 84. Sorry. Um, so what I remember from how to draw comics, the Merville way is things like the arched eyebrows. You draw them differently. You draw them softer. You draw them a little more, a little more pizzazz. Um, the eyes, you're basically drawing their makeup. You know, you're drawing the, the mascara eye and that's, and the, the nose should be a little, a little softer than, than a, a gentleman's nose. 
uh, and just in general, features should be softer. They should just be less, um, less rough, less, you know, lips are going to be, oh, and full lips too, regardless of, you can do, do fuller as, as you need to, but typically you tend to draw both top and bottom. when you're doing a female just to get that across, you know, and we're talking comic book drawing here. Let's be very clear. We're not talking about, um, you know, like if you were like rendering someone's face, you know, in like a, in like a life study kind of a thing where, you know, you'd get in there and you'd, you'd find all the nuances and the, you know, and the, and the variations and you know, you know what I'm saying? Like you'd find all the various ways that make anyone's face unique and more quote unquote masculine, more quote unquote feminine. But what you're really doing when you're drawing for a comic book, and I'm going to, you know, if anyone listening who actually does do this for a living, you're like, you're full of crap. I don't know. This has always been my take on it. And I'm talking about even with the masters I've been re actually, I've been reading a lot of, um, this week I've been reading a lot of John Byrne, um, West coast Avengers. I really enjoyed that run when I was younger and I hadn't read it in quite a long time. And I'm on the, on the Marvel app now. So I'm reading through it. And I forgot that he left it early. And so now I got to Google that and find out what the dealio was. I'm sure it's been talked about. In fact, I think I remember reading about it and I'm sure there was some kind of editorial brouhaha or something. Um, but the reason I bring that up is I love John Burt. Like it's great. Um, I, he kind of has one, it's going to sound like a negative critique, but I don't mean it this way. He kind of has like one face for almost all of his characters. You know, certainly his Wolverine's different than a Cyclops, but um, a lot of his male dudes look like look like the same dudes. You know, and then they just got different hair, different what what have you. Um, versus, I'll say this versus someone like a George Perez Perez, and I've talked about this on the show, um, who, you know, he. Oh, wait, so wait, that's, that's, that's supposed to be the top where her supposed to, yeah. You know, George Perez is, you know, he was a master of getting that unique face, regardless of whatever else is going on in the picture, right? But someone like Byrne, who, I don't mean that with any shade, Byrne is fabulous. One of my absolute, he's a goat. He's one of my absolute favorites. Um, What am I saying though? So what I'm saying is so much of his look and his face is, they are um, implied, they're, they're, they're simplified for the page to do the job of the job. And the job here is to relay to you the information uh, and the adventure of the story, right? It's not to, um, you know, uh, do the most highly rendered perfect image of what you know, Courtney would look like where she, you know, give every little dimple, every little, everything. Well, she does have a dimple, doesn't she? Yeah. So this her this is all proportions a little weird. So my point being is that, uh, you're doing, you're looking for the line that represents what you want, what you want your viewer to see not necessarily the it, that represents the image you want to give them not necessarily that may represent what an actual courtney may look like you know she may have you know a wrinkle here or a wrinkle there right you know like and this is this is all over the place but you know what i mean like like if she were real if she were you drawing someone real she, she might have a little wrinkle there right i don't know but you don't want that because you want her to be cleaner because maybe she's in the same 
image as a roughneck, you know, like a, a, a gung ho or something along those lines. So you simplify her. She looks lighter. You're giving that impression off that she's, that she's, you know, feminine, especially, you know, in like a masculine world, things like that. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the, that's the kind of gobbledy gobbledygook. I took a long way around to say, but what I re- I've been realizing is reading in that digital where you can zoom in and really look at some of the form is that, um, burn does that a lot. He's very, um, whatever the term would be that minimalistic or expressionistic. Um, in fact, I remember him used to, he used to complain about Terry Austin's inks and that Austin put too much hatching and things like that on his stuff. And when you compare his West coast stuff to his, you know, say his X-Men stuff, you see that. And I liked his X-Men stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm an X-Men guy. I like, um, I think that it's a better synthesis. Some artists, some artists are better synthesis synthesized through, you know, an anchor. You know what I mean? And I think Byrne is one of those, although he does a good job inking his stuff. But I think, I think when he has a different anchor, it, it really adds something to it. And maybe that's, that's what, it's, that's what I'm saying. It adds body to his work that, uh, on left to his own devices, he may or may not do. Um, So this is funny. So this, this is, I've got so much, so many pencil lines on this. This is where you'd be like, all right, I'm just going to leave this here and let the inker kind of clean this up. Cause if I try to erase too much, I just end up erasing the main lines I want. We're not going to do that. We're going to. Yeah, man, I'm not very good at drawing the female form. And I don't mean that in any way other than what I meant it. It is not one of the skills I possess. But, you know, it's all right. Only God can judge me. Speaking of that. Um, <laughs> not judging. No. <laughs> uh, speaking of JJ, uh, today, the, uh, obviously that Kickstarter was last week. We talked about this and it, you know, it went crazy and, and did a ton of money. Um, yeah, I can't see in this. I need to dig over this. Today was the day that they, uh, put out. the survey for what you want the additional cards. Cause I guess they're about to hit a, um, a bonus goal. So but what additional cards they want. And, uh, I don't know if, I think it's closed by the time you'll be hearing this. Um, but if, if you, if you are in spitting distance and you hear this, and if you, if they end up doing another survey, I really would love for us to vote for like the B list characters, the, um, you know, the crazy legs of the world, the cesspools of the world, the, I said it, uh, crystal balls of the world. I really would love to see those guys get the cre- get the trading card treatment, only because only because we have gotten, you know, over the years, how you know how much product have we gotten of all the regulars? You know, the Snake Eyes, and I love him. You know, the Snake Eyes, but the the Roblox and the Storm Shadows and the you know the Destros. Like, how about some like Andy Kubert uh, Dodger? You know, like, what would that look like? So I voted. I went. I voted for weirdos. I, I I looked at that list. Big boa. You know, I looked at that list and I said, "Who's the weirdest dude on here?" Um, you know, like a, maybe a range viper would be cool. Although they get a lot of love, but that's what I voted for. So I don't know who you voted for, but I voted for that. Um, and I am loving seeing the reaction that's getting. Uh, all the talk online. I had people send that to me, like, "Hey, did you see them? I'm sure, you saw this." It was awesome. It's a good time to be a Joe fan, man. Uh, there was also the story that leaked that uh, I don't know how true this is, but uh, maybe Chris Hemsworth may be in talks to play uh, a lead. They, I think, I believe all it said was a lead in, in G.I. Joe, which, you know, it's got to be Duke or Hawk, right? If, if Assuming he's a good guy. 
Uh, I'll, but I'm going to say this, though. I'm putting this out there to the world. Chris Hemsworth is Zartan. Perfect. Got the accent. You can do, you know, just make him Zartan. How amazing would that be? I think that would be the best. But I get it. If if, if the story, I believe, said lead. So that, that, you're not, <laughs> not going to do a whole movie about Zartan. Um, but yeah, Chris Hemsworth as Zartan. Uh, that would be great. That would be absolutely great. And and maybe that's, maybe that is, you know, I mean, he's Australian. And he just did that. He did a Zartan-esque turn in, in Furiosa. And he was really good in it. And, you know, maybe it is Zartan. And so he won't be on set all the time, you know? Like he'll literally, the, they just get him for a, a lesser, you know, villainy role. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, Hemsworth, Hemsworth in, in a Joe Transformers movie I'm in, I like him a lot. He's probably the most fun of those of the uh like well next to it's hard to top robert downey jr but he's probably the most fun of all the other actors although i like uh evans yeah they're all great all the marvel actors are great but hemsworth is really really talented so all right um i think that's it it's, it's not you know like i said i don't do i don't do i mean we're gonna, we're gonna give these lips we're gonna give these lips one more try I don't do with ladies well. You know, condolences to Mrs. Slepsky. I, it has long been an absolute flaw. And there have been times when I've been like, well, I'm going to attack that. I'm going to really try to learn how to draw, uh, you know, a, a female form, whatever. And I have just, I'm spilling the tea. I'm opening my heart to you guys. I have just had nothing but problems with it. You know? Um, nothing, nothing but. I don't know if this is, this is, this is getting any better. I think this is only getting worse. Yeah, eyes, everything's all screwed up here. going to get some surgery here we're doing it and that's what's great about using a pencil so this should be here let's just do this free for him there we go that's the move the other thing honestly and this is not an excuse i'm sitting way back right now you got me hunched over so i can finally see the board i've been sitting way back this whole time for all these things i sit way back to try to stay out of the camera and it is incredibly difficult for me to see what i'm drawing because I, because right now the micro, I'm trying to talk, talk in a real world whisper. The microphone is uh, very close to my mouth and uh, trying to stay out of frame. Mary Jane's having a cough. Um, but I, my eyes are not good. And so. Me trying to draw details like an eyeball at a distance is laughable. So I feel like I just improved this image 500 times simply because I actually can see what I'm doing now. And it still ain't perfect. It still ain't even great, but it's better. All right. Well, I don't know. There she is, Courtney. Oh, we need to do her. Peter. It's weird they give her a uh, this this drawing is kind of it's kind of a cobra. Yeah, she that's yeah, her jacket, but it feels very much like a like a cobra cobra neck piece thing that she's got on. Anyway, all right. So, well, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to see if next week if we can uh, we can uh, improve. But there you go. That's the first uh, female form I've drawn, or female face I think I've drawn in probably a long time. So for that, we get a whole, we're going to give that a whole group shot. 902 and a group shot of all four of those groups. Right there. And uh, that's what they get this week. So that's, that's it. That's it for uh, Draw with Joe. 
and now you you know how not to draw Courtney <laughs> cover girl uh, and, and uh, Joe Wing is half the battle. Thank you.